Okay, let's get this done. We need to add pseudo operations to allow us to define zero page and BSS symbols. Now, where is our parser? Parse expression, parse argument, parse, here we go. Now, for ease of parsing, all our pseudo operations are gonna start with a dot. So we read the token, uh, if it's a dot, we'll put this here, then this means it must be a pseudo op. We will read the next token, which needs to be an ID, and then we are going to do something based on what it is. And we are going to do the simplest and cheapest parse thing possible with store copies. So, uh, parse buffer. So if this is a ZP, then, We call this routine here. And what this will do is we'll allocate some zero page. And we are going to keep track of how much zero page we're using in this global variable. So what this is gonna take is A symbol. We now want to create the symbol. The symbol, whoops, the symbol must not exist. We then need a comma. We then need a expression and the expression must resolve to a constant value so therefore there must not be a token variable set and we're going to be using this in several places so I will actually common that out Like so. This will be how much zero page to allocate. The first thing we need to do is to check for overflow, see if we've run out. So if the amount being allocated is less, if we do the addition and the result is smaller than the source, then that means that we have overflowed. So we now have everything we need. So we are going to set the, uh, the type to be symbol computed. The value is the current zero page usage. Advance zero page, and I believe we are done. Let me just have a quick look down here. Oh, uh, that should be offset. 
and it builds. So, let us define a symbol. Uh, we're going to call it, we can't, don't want to call it A because that will get make life very confusing if it gets mixed up with the with one of these. So we're going to say count one byte. that was going to fail. Why has it failed? Uh, well, we've got a token This doesn't include the leading dot. Pars buffer is zero terminated. I made sure of that. So that should be working. So I think that there is something in the pass buffer that is not printable, either that was Either that or store copy does not, in fact, compare two strings. Okay, let's try. That's better. Unexpected garbage at end of line. Uh, why did we print a one? Interesting. So from here, that will break down to, break out of the switch to here. It's then expecting a end of line character, which there is, it's an actual end of line. If I get rid of that, it should fail to assemble, yeah. Interesting. Where is that one coming from? There are no printfs in the code. There it is. Right, that's actual debugging I put in. Uh, it's received a one, which is an ID. Try that. Okay, it doesn't like blank lines. Okay, so let's make some padding. And then we can do LDA count. Symbol, what do we get? A5, LDA, zero, zero. Not the right value. I know what we did wrong. This is not a com symbol computer, this is a symbol ZP. Being a symbol computed, it will have generated raw bytes and not produced a expression node, which meant that it would have filled out the value with the raw offset, which should have been right actually. There we go. A505. That is correct. RTS. So we should actually now be able to write real code. Um, what am I going to do? STA count. Uh, label. 
uh, it's going to be terrible code, but compare with 10, cpx10 uh, branch if it's equal to 10 to exit, otherwise increment and jump to label rts. So that used 98 bytes of token memory, which is approximately two thirds of the size of the source file, and has produced what looks more or less like the right code, but we can check that. Right, well, it's not right. This is the wrong addressing mode. No, it's not. This is the right addressing mode. Yeah, this is getting very confused because it's seeing that the zero page and the actual code are uh, occupying the same addresses. So, but that does actually seem to be more or less correct. The disassembly is completely mangled. Uh, Can I do something about that? I am not sure I can. Yeah, I can set the start address for the code, but not for the zero page. And if I change the start address, which I, which I will, but well, I've done that here to something else then it's also produced incorrect code. Okay, so this jump instruction, the jump label, it's jumped to address four, which is no longer in this code. But I do see that the BEQ seems to have generated garbage. In fact, that has generated three bytes from the CPX to the INX, and it's all wrong. We have an FC, a 0F, and a 00. zero. So, that will be somewhere in this, if it should have noticed that it was relative and gone through either uh, we don't want write code, we want place code. It should have set the length to either 5 or 2. A length of 3, which is what we seem to have here, is going to be totally wrong. So let's see what's going on there. My suspicion is that it's not actually passing through that code at all. Yeah, it's not. Um, and that the wrong opcode is being generated. In fact, I know the wrong opcode is being generated because of that FC. And there is, in fact, no FC instruction. Okay, so that will be... Somewhere up here in PARS, uh, we should have well, the one we wanted was BEQ, which is this instruction. So has it managed to add, has it got F0 and then added 0C to it?
Well, there's our F0, and there is a 12, which is the wrong number. Right, get B of AM is the code that converts our addressing mode enumeration to a B value. So rel should be here. No, that's the wrong bit. We want this one. I don't see rel on that. Here is our addressing mode Okay, yeah. Uh, so the addressing mode for the branch instructions is a label that is an absolute value. The what I actually want for the encoding is a relative value. So uh, when doing this conversion, I do need to figure out whether this opcode wants a relative result and convert. So that should happen here. Uh, if get innocent props of the opcode is a is relative, then If it's not relative, uh, fetch the opcode. Is this a relative instruction? If it's not, add on the B value, generate the code. There you go. And that BEQ is pointing at the right place, the RTS. So if we have our first working program and we have our zero page working. The zero page is possibly the simplest thing you can possibly do because we don't need forward references. We don't need, uh, we know the values statically during the parse phase because it like starts at zero and works up. The uh, when the binary is loaded, then all the zero page offsets will be uh, adjusted for the base address. We still need to generate the relocation tables correctly. So why has that failed? So we read the token, it should be an end of line token, but it's not, it's skipped ahead. So in Alexa, wherever it's got to here, see here, if we see a new line, turn it into an end of line. And this code is actually reading the next byte. What this does is it skips white space 
uh, and it deals with making comments go away. We want our code to work in both Unix files and DOS files. Unix files are terminated with carriage return line feed. Unix files are terminated with carriage return. PBC Micro and old MacOS files are terminated with uh, carriage return, which is annoying. So we are treating carriage returns back to slash R's as white space, ignoring them. So this should be working. So this is what we have read. Dot Z P comma five end of file. Each of these is going to be the first character of the word. So the Z is the ZP, the P is padding. So end of line dot ZP count comma one. End of line, end of line again, and it hits the LDA and gets confused. Okay, so it's nothing to do with Alexa. But I can tell from looking at this that um, here it is, here it is. So we try to read a line. We see a lone end of line character. By doing break here, we consume the character which means that that end of line character is considered to be a statement. That's that one. So we skip to the end and we try to read the end of line character that terminates that statement. But we're actually in the next statement, which is LDA. That's why it's producing this error. So what we actually want to do here is to either push that back onto the parse stack or do a continue that actually restarts the loop. There you go. Worked. Okay, we've got zero page. We've got zero page working, you've got text working, now we need BSS. BSS is uh, referring to the section of memory that comes after the loaded part of the program. So none of the symbols defined in the BSS section uh, actually appear as labels. We, what we are going to do is define them the same way we did BSS that's the same way we did zero page, and say that we want, say, 10 bytes of BSS reserved for a thing called table. So the way we are going to do this is the same way as for zero page. In fact, we could very nearly reuse the same piece of code here. Uh, I think we can, okay. 
So let's make this a uint 16. This will take a pointer to the variable itself, the usage variable, and a maximum value. Uh, now we can't rely on overflow, so we're actually going to do So we do the computation, if the new value is smaller than the old value, or the new value is greater than the maximum, then we have run out of space. Uh, you know what, I don't think that's worth it because this is going to have to be different too so let's just back all that stuff out put that back to a uint 8 but we can common out the common bit Um, this is going to be pars single comma number. Okay, so pars uh, dot said p is going to be the same as it was, pass uh, so will come a number, and for the BSS, this will be BSS usage. Uh, if this overflows, ran out of BSS, uh, this will actually, this will very rarely happen. If this overflows, it's because you've used 64K of BSS, which is the total amount of memory on the system, which is ridiculously high. So this then becomes a BSS symbol, BSS usage, like that. And then this gets added here. Okay, and that works. However, we are not done. Let me take, get rid of... Let me get rid of these and define a byte of BSS instead. Now, we assemble this and we see LDA 0 SDA and then 16-bit address, LDA and a 16-bit address, and the rest of it is as before. This 16-bit address is zero because when we uh, ran this statement, the BSS pointer was at zero, but zero is not the value we want in the actual code. So we are going to have a third variable so after each call to place code we are
are going to update text usage with the program count that we've calculated for a pass through here. Then when we write the code, uh, so if, when we write the code, we wish to, if this is a BSS address, we, write, we add that value on. So if variable type equals symbol BSS, text usage. There we go. So now when we run it, our symbol is at uh, 0011, which is this address here i.e. the byte after the RTS. That is working. Excellent. Okay, uh, what is next? I think in terms of features... Oh yeah, we do want to do... this and... this. But let's comment that one out for now. So back down here and let's find the parser code again. Okay, now, this then needs to read a comma-separated list of values. So, we go loop. We wish to read a uh, read a number, well, read an expression. Now, let me think. If we have a variable, then this is a complex expression and we need to emit a expression node for it, but we don't want an opcode. Now we can, I'm gonna cheat like mad. Uh, we're gonna generate a normal expression node with an opcode of zero. Zero is break here, which is a implicit argument opcode, so it should never be going through that code. So we're going to special case zero. Uh, so we wish to add, I've forgotten how add expression record works. Uh, isn't the argument of this always record expr? Because I didn't never got around to adding any more. And in fact, we are going to have to do a little bit more than that because we need to tell the expression record whether this is supposed to be a one byte or a two byte value. So I'm going to use zero zero for uh, one byte and FF for two bytes. Again, hacky as hell, but. So we've passed the expression, we then want to look at the next token without consuming it. If it's not a comma, stop. Otherwise, consume it and go again. Okay, let's fix this. 
will make the code smaller. Okay, so this will actually work, but it'll produce the wrong thing. So here we have uh, the right thing. I was not expecting that. Okay, that has worked because break being an implicit, an implied, implicit, whatever opcode, it has actually omitted the the. Uh, the value we wanted as the opcode. Wait, how has that worked? Uh, so it'll go through here, it'll have omitted the opcode. Then if there's a variable, yeah, it does that. Then we write the address. Length will be one, but it should have written two things. Oh, oh, I'm stupid. Um, it has worked because uh, my test program used constant values. So let's cre create some zero page values. Uh, like so. Add those on. There we go. These three values here. It's emitted the opcode, which is zero, and has not touched the uh, the actual values. So here we need to override some of this. Just wondering about the cleanest and simplest way to do this. So we do want to override the length. We know from here that uh, these are the various different conditions. Yeah, okay. So if opcode is zero, override the length to one. Otherwise do this, otherwise do this. Then down here in write code, this will fall through to here. So then it will write the first byte of the payload. And then this will decide to write the second byte of the payload if the length is three, which it never will. So here we have our three zero page values. Good. So this is annoyingly complicated because remember we have to duplicate a lot of that logic down here under write text relocations. So back up here in parse, let's put the words in.
parse.pss, uh, no, parse.byte. Uh, as that is the same code, Okay, now we go back to write code, uh, sorry, place code, and we put in another condition here. And the length for this will always be two. Down here under write code, So this will write the first byte of the variable. And this will write the second byte of the variable. Okay, so what's this gonna do? So one 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 one. That ain't right. Have we actually correctly set the opcode correctly? Files dot constants OXFF add expression record op. This code is wrong. We are, in fact, going to have to have separate routines for this. Right. And cut and paste it because this because this is a 16-bit value. Right. One, 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 two, 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 three, 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 four, four, followed by Zero 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 zero, which is the address of zero page value one. O one oh 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 two oh oh that's correct. O five oh oh which is the correct address of label here, and one oh 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 which I expect is the correct address of exit. So that looks like it is working. Okay. One more thing we need to do for this, which is string constants are special. String constants are parsed by the lexer and written into the parse buffer, complete with things like string escapes. So all we have to do is to directly emit the, con the contents of the parse buffer into the, uh, into the, the output. And we know that there cannot be any expressions in this, therefore it's just emit byte. Um, So 
So it's literally that easy. So now we can go down to here and we do for a zero terminated constant. And there is our constant. Hello world, followed by a exclamation mark. Followed by not a zero. That's a zero, that should be a zero. Is there a problem with zero in general? Yeah. No, this is working. Zero. Uh, hang on. Zero, zero. Six, oh. That's RTS. Oh, five, oh, six, oh, seven, oh, eight, oh, nine. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, that's very wrong. So emit byte here should be getting the correct result. So let's just verify that. not getting any tracing. Pars expression here is setting token variable, which it shouldn't be. It's a number. It should just bail out here, having cleared token variable. So let's do some stepping. Right, so we're here. We call pass expression. Which is here. We set our things to zero. We Call read token, which appears to be inlined. Read token isn't called lots of places. I'd be surprised if that was inlined. But I don't know what it's doing. I th okay, this is where it's calling read token. Here is where it's getting the result. So I put a breakpoint there. Go. I am looking at the wrong piece of code. I should be up here. So two is a number. So we got here. So that just returns. There you go. So that takes us down to Pars dot byte, pars expression. So we're now we're looking at token variable. That does not look like comparing to zero.
but it has done it and then it's trying to call add expression record so it's just read token variable from one e38 which we saw it clear to zero here So has read token set it? It can't possibly have. It should have gone through this piece of code. I mean, token variable should not be set by this at all. Okay. Well, that's a lot of them, so... Uh, So we've gone into parse expression with token variable set and it looks like we've come out of it again with token variable still set. Parse expression here has has set token variable to null. So we go in, we see that token variable is 3CDD. Inside parse expression, we do before read and we see that the value is now zero. Then we call read token and after the read, we see it is back to 3CDD again. I do not understand what's going on here. It's more of this stupid stuff. Read token doesn't touch token variable. Read token touches the parse buffer. So we shouldn't be saving and restoring the variable here. But I think that's going to cause things to break elsewhere. So parse expression should set token variable. Okay. Token look ahead variable.
that looks more sensible. And here we have two zeros after the string and our numbers here are looking sensible. Okay. All right. How are we doing for, for damage? Ouch, ouch. Because uh, there's actually more to do. We are most of the way there. There's only a few more bits to do, which is the uh, the relocation stuff. So. We have expression nodes, expression records, and we want to put the, we want to write relocations. So, let's get the length of the instruction here. This should be set correctly, so uh, one, two, or three. For a zero page byte, this should be one. For a address word, this should be two. We now want to if This needs relocating, so if it's a absolute address or a zero page address, and there is a variable set. then we need a relocation record. So, text address. Uh, and in fact, this will also apply for BSS addresses, the same code. Here we are calculating the address to fix up, assuming it's a three byte instruction. We don't know that anymore. So let's go with the last byte. Um, and we ignore zero page. So zero, uh, actually, yes, we can just chop this out. So the same code applies here. Although it's easier because we have to relocate So the thing is, up here it's straightforward because uh, one of these can only appear in a absolute relocation. So in fact, we don't need to do that check that test. We know that if there is a variable and the variable is a text or BSS reference, then we have to do a 16-bit relocation. Down here, if the variable is zero page, then we need to do zero page relocation, but 
a zero page value may appear in both a abs or a zp uh, opcode. So if get in some props s opcode is zero page, do I want to do that? Uh, well, I've just noticed that this is wrong. We actually want this, rather than being the length of the opcode, we have the length in the, the record itself, which is going to be more accurate. So down here, if this is a absolute relocation, then the address is going to be If this is one of our special addresses, the special opcodes, the address is right here. Otherwise, if it's an absolute opcode, the address is at PC plus one. In fact, we know that uh, if it's not one of these, the address will always be at PC plus one. So that's straightforward. And then we just do the relocation thing. Okay, so let's take a look at our program. Here are our relocation records. This chunk is for uh, I can't remember which order they are in now. Text. Text goes first, then zero page. So we skip four bytes, one, two, three, four. Right, one, two, three, four, this one. That's correct. We skip three bytes, one, two, three. That's correct. We skip another four, one, two, three, four. That's a BEQ. We don't want to fix those up. And in fact, now I think of it, BEQs are going to be have to be fixed up specially. Okay. So, figure out the type of opcode. If this is a relative And 
the length is 5 bytes, we need a relocation. In fact, let's just do... If the length is 5 bytes, we need a relocation, otherwise don't do anything. Otherwise... write the relocation as normal. So if the length is 5 bytes, then we're generating a, uh, a relative branch, displacement, jump, high byte, uh, low byte, high byte. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4. So we actually want to do Uh, in fact, the high byte is the last byte of the chunk. So, we only want to do nothing if this is a relative branch and the length is 2. So let's invert that. That's the wrong end. If it is not relative, or the length is not 2, then write the relocation. Why is it complaining about my braces? because I need another parenthesis there. Okay. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, yep. 0, 1, uh, 4. Zero, one, two, three, four. Zero, one, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That looks correct. That's the last byte before the RTS. So yes, that's the end of label. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, A, B, C, D, E, but we don't relocate this because it's an E. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, B, C, D, E, likewise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, A, B, C. That is the high byte of a label. That's correct. And the last one is a 2. 1, 2. Those all look like valid fix-ups. Okay, 0 page. Uh, e. Uh, e is here. Um, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, that's correct. That's this address. But the next nibble is a 0. And the 0 means don't advance. So we relocate that again. And again, and then we advance E. Yeah, it's not advanced over these, so that is all bogus. Let's check the zero page relocation.
Right, PC plus one is the problem, I think. Because we're currently at PC. If the opcode is OO or the opcode is FF, relocate here. Yeah, that shouldn't kind of never happen, because we should always advance a bit. That, so let's change that to that, which is like more correct. Still not right. Wait a minute. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I know what it is. Uh, we have shadowed Len up here. So let's make that length. So Len is the length of the record. Length is the length of the instruction. but it still hasn't helped. E8, O, O, E9, O, O. Get rid of that break. It's because it's never been advancing here. Okay, that looks better. Right, one one. So we were fixing up our zero page. We were here. Eight put us here. One, one, e. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E. Uh, A. Why is it that being? Why is it fixing that up? That's that zero. Should not be fixing that up. That's wrong. It must have come through here with variable set. So peak token here forces it to pass the string and fill the pass buffer. Read token then consumes it. We do it in that order because if the read token is uh, consuming something that also uses the pass buffer, i.e. nearly everything, it will overwrite the pass buffer. So we consume the string. Is it a comma? Which it is. Consume the comma back to the top. Interesting. Um, 
Okay, that was A. So one, two. That's wrong. We're here now. I think I may have miscounted. Let me try that again. Okay, let's go over. So, E. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, one. E. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E. Huh. A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A. Uh, so yes, that's correct. That is the low byte of one. Two, one, two. Low byte of two. Another two. Low byte of three. And we're at, then it's the end. We get an F. So I don't know why it's trying to parse, why it's trying to fix that up. So that's the next thing to look at. Okay, short break then. Let's take a look at what's going on here. Okay, so we should... Uh... Right, so... We have come out of string. And we have read a zero. Both token value and token variable. So there are only, after the string, there are only two more um, bytes. The rest are all words, and both of them are zeros. So there should, in fact, be no relocation generated there. So I am kind of confused. So down here in... We don't want write code, we want write text relocations. We only generate the relocation if there is a variable and the variable type is a text or BSS. Sorry, this is zero page relocation, so I should be down here. So E eight one one E A. Well the one one is one 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 two three four five six seven eight nine A B C D it's an E, it doesn't do a relocation. Right, then we go straight into A. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A. Right, okay, that's the right address. Ah, that was just idiocy. Okay, we are in fact nearly finished. Um, I will just write a few things here. Uh, Zero page usage. That will just show us how big our program is.
and I will actually put this up here so it happens before we do the writing. And I'm also going to put in uh, out So it will now print dots after every analysis pass, just to give you an idea that something is happening. So here you can see we've done two analysis passes for this code. Okay, there is one final thing remaining, apart from, you know, adding a full expression parser, which I haven't done yet. Uh, and that is, well, first let's, yeah, okay, there are no more printfs. Uh, and that is to actually generate the CPM65 header. Which is seven bytes long. I've got it, got it documented in here, roughly. So every place where we do PC equals zero, we actually want to start at start address. And the header is very simple. It just contains uh, the amount of memory being used, where the relocation table is, etc. So we wish to. amount of zero page being used. Uh, okay, this is actually more complicated than it looks. The number of TPA memory pages required is the amount needed to load and run the program. And to load the program you have to have enough space for the relocation table, this stuff down here. And if I actually look at asm.com itself, and go down to the end, there's actually quite a lot of relocation table. That's all relocation tables, starting from about, uh, I believe it's this A4, maybe this EE. -E. So, uh, we don't know how big that is at this point. Which is annoying. Um, I am just going to ignore that for the time being. So what we want to do is take the text usage, round it up, and turn that into the number of pages of 256 bytes. Okay, now we need the address of the relocation table, uh, which we know is going to be immediately after the text. So this is going to be text usage itself, uh, low byte, high byte. We then have a jump instruction followed by two zeros. Uh, this will contain the address, this will be patched up when the program is loaded to contain the BDOS entry point address. 
Uh, there's actually no reason why the header couldn't put something in there that would save another couple of bytes. We could, for example, put the text usage in there, uh, but then you wouldn't get access to the text usage value in the running program, so uh, it's only two bytes. Okay, what have we got? Uh, 03, three bytes of zero page. 01, one byte, uh, one page of TPA. 4100 is the address of the uh, fix up table, which is there, that looks plausible. 4C0000 and then the code. I think that's worked. Okay, let's write a program. I'll get rid of all this. Program. There is our program containing a whole one byte of instruction. So if you consider the overhead, we are up to uh, that's 10 bytes of program for one byte of opcode. In other words, 90% of that program is overhead, which is like horribly wasteful. So let's run it. It works. Excellent. We are finished. No, of course we're not finished. Um, I actually completely forgot about one thing that we're going to need to do, which is to do anything useful at all, we have to be able to refer to the high and low addresses of expressions. And that is something that we're going to have to put in the expression record. I don't want to eat another bite for this. Uh, I could use a bit field, because we don't need 8 bits for length. But I have no idea how well LLVM MOS handles bit fields. So let's just do uh, post processing none low byte high byte. Right, we don't need those. Uh, just trying to think how to do bite-sized enums. I can't remember. There is a way. Maybe that only works in C++. Anyway, let's just use this. Okay, so parse expression. Before we do anything else, we want to um, check to see if there's a left or right angle bracket, and then we need to put the result somewhere. Great. Uh, and in fact, this is going to be used in lots of places. have to put it into a 
computed node 2 okay this is actually pretty ugly uh, I hadn't thought about this. It's rather more complicated than I originally thought. Okay, so in the expression record, it's fine. We can just set the value. We can have our parse expression stick any post-processing value into a global and then pick that up and stash it in the expression record. For a symbol record, For a symbol record, we're just going to forbid it for now. So, token variable, token post processing. Okay. RC equals peak token if C is left angle bracket token post processing equals uh, least significant byte and token else token post press uh, else if c equals greater than equals pp most significant byte otherwise proceed as usual Okay. Uh, now, if this is a number, this is a constant value, we actually want to apply the post processing immediately. So, uh, what did I call that? Post process constant. So, if it's an ID, then you'll end up with a post processing value. If it's a constant, you won't. So, for an AM IM, you'll end up with no post processing required. Add expression record. Where are we using this? Uh, parse argument. Uh, this as a indirect operation uh, we are going to forbid
fact, I think there's no reason why we couldn't do it there. Yeah, there's no reason why we can't do it there, and it just makes life more complicated. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, but this will be encoded as a uh, an expression record. So pars symbol comma number number is a const expression. Uh, pars dot byte. Yep, that will work out. Dot word. Uh, here we do want to forbid it. Uh, and that's the lot. That's not going to work because uh, we have to put the actual, you know, work in. So load the low byte of label, load the high byte of label. This is what we want it for. And on the 6502, it's hard to do anything without it, which is why I'm obsessing over it. Uh, So this is uh, oh, I keep forgetting that's got the right. That's not actually assembled it there. So here's the header. Here's where the program starts. Um, it's noticed it's an immediate. It's in fact given us the low byte. So that's LDX uh, OC and LDY OC RTS. Okay, now this is going to be irritating. So place code is unchanged. It doesn't care about any of this stuff. Write code uh, is changed. So relative, you're not going to post process on relative and I should put in some code to check that. Uh, if s post process constant equals pp msb Then uh, shift write the address if it's the least significant, if you want the least significant byte, mask out the top two bytes. Okay, that's straightforward. Now we come to writing the text relocations. So this is the address of the text relocation. If we are only returning the most significant byte, then this means that the whole address is shifted down by 16 bits. Which means that we want to relocate the low byte, not the high byte. So we need to move the address up one. For ZP relocations, uh, 
post-processing doesn't make any sense if you try to take the most significant byte of a zero page value you will get uh, zero so we can actually check that up here in the place code Uh, this is adjusting the size. Do I want to do it here? Let's do it down here, actually. If actually we do want to allow this because you might be giving a z zero page address to code like this so you do actually want this one to safely produce a zero so if we are so only omit the relocation if uh if the user didn't ask for a most significant byte. I think that will work. Okay, well. What do we have? Uh, A2 OC, A0, 0, 0. That looks right. Shame about the relocation. No, hang on, the relocations are here. 8, 1. So, 8 is correct. No, wait a minute, that's not correct. That is the least significant byte. That should not be being relocated. So write text relocations. Um, we want to go here. So in fact, we don't want to return any, we don't want to emit any relocations for least significant byte values. That just gives us a straight nine, which is still the wrong address. Because you want the next one. Um, okay. The reason for this is because we are looking at the last byte of the instruction, but the instruction is in fact a two byte thing and we weren't expecting to get a 16 bit relocation into a two byte instruction we wanted this because of a long relative long conditional branches. So in fact, uh, if
only decrement the address if this is not an immediate addressing mode. I do not like this code. This is getting complicated and full of edge conditions. But we now have an A here, so that's uh, 89A. That is the right address. Okay, let's write a real program. Not a very big real program, but so uh, A contains the low address of our message, X contains the high address. Uh, we are going to call system call number nine. And we are going to call the address at start minus three, which contains the BDOS entry point. Does this assemble? Well, it thinks it's assembled. What do we have here? Well, uh, LDA message. 11 is the right low address, LDX 0, LDY 0, uh, JSR 4, that's the right address, that's the address of this 4C here, and a 6 0. So that's not right. Let's get rid of the comment just in case that was upsetting things. That's still wrong. So this should not have touched the value of the constant. Given that there was no post-processing applied. Uh, so if you look at token value, those are all zeros. Let's sit that here. Okay, post process constant is in fact corrupting our uh, our values. Presumably, This is going to be a push and peak thing again. I do not like this stuff. Um, there must be a better way to do it. So that will be something that I will want to look into in the future. Okay, that's now, I believe, worked. So we now have a test.com that should have the correct code in it. And it doesn't.
token post processing is zero. There we go, that's what's wrong. Okay. A0, A9. I think that's worked. So. <laughs> it doesn't work. <sighs> A9, 1, 1. A2, 1, 1. That's the wrong address. So that will be the, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. So both of these load instructions will be getting a relocation. So text relocation here, we'll be trying to deal with them both. So, Uh, it's actually write code here that must be writing the wrong things. So if the post processing was MSB, we should shift it by write. Shift. Uh, that should be okay. So why did that not print anything? Because I didn't run the assembler, that's why. Okay, here are our two relocations and they both say, they both specify a post-processing value of zero. That is because this is going wrong up here. Yeah, I'm getting tired, I should stop. We only want to uh, we only want to actually change the change the value of token value if we can. Okay. And it's still wrong. So if there's a variable, then it's not a constant and we don't want to apply the post processing now. We want to leave it until the, uh, until we actually do the emission. Right, we are seeing a post-processing value of zero, which is sort of wrong. So this should have left the correct post-processing value in. And it's always a zero. So pars argument is doing something wrong. Well, pars expression here should be returning a post-processing value, which it's not. So if we go back up to pars expression. So what we got was an ID. Let's just put that there. 
That has not set either of these. Okay, well these are there, so the Lex is seeing it. We did verify that this was working elsewhere. So, uh... So it has read token cleared it? Yes, of course read token has cleared it because read token has pushed the thing that was previously popped from there. So this is a hacky workaround. In fact, this this should be okay because this will fetch a new token. This needs properly fixing. There you go. A911, A200. Okay. Let's try this then. <laughs> All right. Let's debug it. LDA11, LDX00, this is after loading. So that's wrong. That should not be 00, that should be 02. This emulator loads binaries at 0200. So we look at the fix up table A5. Uh, eight nine a that's actually the right place so why hasn't it why hasn't CPMEMU fixed that up because it should have it's the, uh, the two fix up nibbles at a5 so the first thing to be fixed up is here we should get two added to that and five on from there one two three four five um, because that's the JSR start that should be 0204 that address I suspect this is a bug in CPM EMU which is out of scope for this video so I will take a break and take a look at that the answer is very simple, my documentation is wrong. This is my own documentation I wrote for my own operating system. The zero page comes first, not the TPA. So this is going to be... Uh, first one is for zero page, second is for addresses. Okay, so I did get that right. I just need to swap these two around to write those in the other order. Assemble. Uh, okay, that has loaded the right address, 0211. That is the wrong instruction. That's a bit instruction. Not a JSR. Right, because JSR is special, and we've actually added the B value for absolute to it. Um, now, one way of doing it is to add a special addressing mode for JSR, but the other way to do it is to hack it uh, and the B value for abs for, for abs is three. So if we subtract 
three shifted left by two from that, then once the B value is added on, that should be right. JSR. We get our hello world. Okay, well, we now have a fully functional, if extremely dubious, let's get rid of that, assembler for CPM65. How big is it? 8K. I suspect that once I put the expression parser in, that will go up to 9. But I think that is working. Okay, let's try it on simulated real hardware. Boot CPM65. Uh, do we have a hello world here? Uh, type hello dozen. We do not. Uh, and we now need to actually do a proper build. There we go. That will regenerate the file system. Okay, so let's turn hello.asm into hello.com. And then it crashes. Fabulous. <laughs> Okay, I think I can actually guess what happened, which is that we are falling off the bottom of the program here, except we've probably overwritten um, some stuff the TPA needed. So if we force a warm boot, that will reinitialize it and, um, you know, it should just be better. So let's try that one more time. And again, I keep forgetting to test to see whether the disk noises are showing up on the video. There you go. And we're back to the A prompt. And now we have a hello.com. Which looks like it's got the same code that we had before. And it runs. Fabulous. Well, the assembler is way bigger than I would like it to be, but it is written in C, so that's pretty good. Uh, C is notoriously hard to uh, compile on the 6.0.2. Um, I'm sure there's cleanup that needs doing, but I also suspect that that cleanup will be uh, counterbalanced by adding the expression parser, which we kind of need for a real assembler. I need to investigate what actual code is being produced and persuade it to do better. But it does work, and even on this very limited uh, machine, I mean, it's only got 25-odd um, K of available RAM to CPM. We still get 16K 
of available space. That means looking at how big the the internal state that this thing uses, the, the records it assembles in memory, uh, it seems to be pretty reliably about two-thirds the size of the source code. So that's actually a reasonable size of program. You can write non-trivial programs in that. So I think that is a success. This was supposed to be a prototype to see whether it was actually going to work at all, but I think it has. So that's nice. And I'm still not very happy with a lot of this code. Anyway, as always, this is going to be pushed to GitHub and I'll make it part of the CPM65 distribution. Um, if anyone wants to try it, you're more than welcome and write programs in it. Just try not to, you know, use it with care because it's likely to break. So, anyway, I think we're going to call that one the last video of the series. I think that's up to five now. And uh, I won't do any more because I don't think there won't be anything particularly interesting left to do. So, assuming you're still watching, hope you enjoyed this video. As always, please let me know what you think in the comments.